in the angelic ranking in all of creation only man could reveal the dimensions of god and lucifer had perceived this thing so he wanted to enter into it i will exalt my throne above this please hear me this person tonight is not to educate you is to cook you i came to cook you tonight with power because see some may not like your face but their presence counts for nothing that's why i told jeremiah don't be afraid of their faces they will gang up against you it will amount to nothing he said though they shall gather it shall not be by me he said every tongue that rises against you in judgment thou shall condemn although the enemy may come in he said as a flood the spirit of the lord shall lift up a standard the standard of god is the standard of power that is why he said gather together you will scatter take counsel together it shall come to know speak a word it shall not stand for the shout of a king that thing that has been stopping you they go down tonight by the power of god For a while, I need to step down the voltage so I can go far. There's a journey. Power is the key for ordination. See, the Bible said, even the hair of your head is numbered. God knows your hair. Is it you? He's not aware of. You didn't come here by accident. Before you came, something was written. You came to fulfill it. You are not an accident. You are purpose finding expression. You are an errand from eternity. God had something in mind. The only way he could give expression to you was to shoot you to the earth. And nothing can stop you. Because from tonight, you will step into the corridors of power. Sit down for a moment. Power is the key. See, when you catch the power, fear dies. Because you know that even if hell breaks loose, you can't be stopped. That's how power works. Nothing can stop you. Number two, purpose of power. Power is the basis for accessing your inheritance. God is not a reckless father. He has inheritances for you and I. So that we have things that we receive on account of his love. But it will take for it to be delivered unto you. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 24. He said, rise ye up. Take up thy journey. Go beyond the river Anon. Behold, I have given unto you Sihon the Amorite, king of Heshbon. Begin to contend with him and possess the land. The land has been given to you, but you need power to take over. See, your inheritances are a gift from God, but it takes power for you to access it. Because the devil will rise up against you. This is why God empowers us. My God, you think the devil wants you to walk in your glorious destiny? No. Anybody you see fulfilling destiny, the devil tried everything. It didn't work. Possess the land. See, somebody will possess something tonight. He said, I've seen an abomination on the face of the earth. Princes are trekking. White beggars are riding on horses. Why? Princes can't possess their possession. But a generation of possessors will rise from here tonight. The third significance of power is that power guarantees protection. There are arrows. Listen, we are fought night and day. We are here because there's nothing the devil can do about it. We are fought rest on every side Luke 11 21 to 23 when a strong man keeps his house his gifts his possessions are in safety so you need to be a strong man to keep your house and it's not just enough to be a strong man you need to keep growing in strength because you will keep your house until a stronger man shows up 
He said, that man will bind you and then take your spoil. But what now happens when the man shows up and discover you are stronger? You will collide with him, subdue him. He will not just repent. When a thief is caught, he will repay sevenfold. So you will divide the spoil of the other people that he has not looted. There are enormous things that we have that the devil is jealous of. The favor on your life, the wisdom on your life, the resources that God has given you, the influence God has given you. The devil wants to choke them. You need power to keep everything with you so that none is lost. Jesus said, all that you have given me, none has been lost. No one was lost. There was power to keep. So there is a power to possess and there is a power to keep that which is possessed. This is why you need power. You will not lose anything in your lifetime. The fourth significance of power is that power is the key for sustainable impact. Nobody is making impact by luck. There is no such thing as luck in the world of impact. Everybody you see making impact is making impact by a dimension of power. Daniel eleven thirty two. They that do know their God, they shall be strong, and they shall what do exploit. Exploit is a function of strength. They that do know their God, they shall be strong, and they shall do exploit. If you are not making impact, it means there is a, a deficiency in a dimension of power. Number five, significance of power. Power is the key for making positive influence. You can't influence people without power. You don't influence people because you are a good talker. When you see men submit, it's because a power compels it. He said, through the greatness of thy power, shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. You need to influence people and you must because you have a message for your generation. The world needs to accept Jesus from your mouth. You have other businesses and other ventures that you need to sell out in order to have a, 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 a meaningful existence. Do you understand? That real estate won't prosper because you dress in suit. It will prosper because there's an acaso on your lips. When you talk, men have no choice. You don't get it. It takes power. Go into the highway and compel them. Men are compelled. And when you find anybody comparing men, there's a power. First Chronicles 12 verse 22. Daily men joined themselves to David until his host became like the host of God. Daily men join themselves. When you find somebody influencing a generation, there is a force. That's why I say, my horn has thou exalted like the horn of the unicorn. For you have anointed me with fresh oil. It takes power for your generation to hear you. Who told you people follow people because they speak well? There's a power. There's a power. There's a power. This is why you cannot settle with powerless existence. Hate it! Go and look at Jesus' ministry. To death of his ministry was a demonstration of power. To death. It was written about me to do your will. I come in the volumes. I come in the volume of the books. It was written about me to do your will, O God. I come in the volume. I come in the volume of the books. It was written about me to do your will, to do your will, O God. I will do. sisters and we need a lot of it Jesus wanted to send his disciples to go influence their world he said daddy until you are endued with power I know you know what to say but power must be encoded into your words and when the Holy Ghost came they were baptized with power that same day the Bible said Peter spoke 
Acts 2, 37, 3,000 was added to the church. The next time Peter spoke, Acts 4, verse 4, 4,000 was added to the church. The next time they spoke, Acts 6, 7, even a great company of the priests became obedient to the faith and it became impossible for them to be together. So they had to separate and Philip went to Samaria. Acts 8, verse 1 to 5, he spoke and the whole city was filled with joy. Acts 13, verse 44, Paul spoke, the whole city came under his influence. What type of thing is that? It's a power. Thank God for billboard. Thank God for media advert. But if there is no anakazo, you are joking. The first type of evangelism is power evangelism. When they heard him, he said they were pricked in their hearts. And on their own, they said, men and brethren, what shall we do to be saved? We want to follow everything you have said. It took power. Fifth significance of power. You can't help others except you are empowered. I've illustrated for you here before. A man sitting on the ground can't lift another up. He must stand first. Only powerful men can help others. No powerless man has the capacity to help others. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. Who went about doing good. Healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. The word doing good, there's the word philanthropy. It takes power to be a philanthropist. There are many people who want to help the hungry. They don't have power. There are many people who want to help the poor. They don't have power. There are many persons who want to help the sick. They don't have power. This is why the church of Jesus is a church of power. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. The kingdom of God is not in words. It's in the demonstration of power. When I came unto you, I did not come with excellency of speech declaring unto you the counsel of God. I came in the demonstration of the spirit and of power. I choose to know nothing among you save Christ and him crucified. My preaching and my teaching, they were not with enticing words of man's wisdom. They were the demonstrations. The demonstration of the spirit and of power. The move of God is a move of power. Too many talkers. That's why nobody is helped. People are there for one year serving God, but they are sick. They are in sin. They are suffering. We need a fresh baptism. We need a fresh baptism. We need a fresh baptism. The apostles knew that a point came. Their witness was not enough. And he said they returned to their own company. And said, Father, behold their threatenings. Behold their threatenings. He said, grant that by stretching forth thy hands that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy son Jesus. And in Acts 4.33, he said with great power, with great power, God gave witness of the resurrection of Jesus and great grace was upon them. With great power, if there is no great power, there can be no great witness. Nobody is helped without power. I decree over you tonight, everything making you powerless goes down now. When I look at our generation, we have not seen anything and we are talking. Somebody will come and say, better pursue character. All this power, power. Have we seen power? I'm not against character. I'm an advocate of character. Jesus manifested character for 30 years before power. But wait a minute. Have you seen power? Which power have you seen? Joshua 10 verse 12. Israel was fighting in war. And Joshua stood in the public, stretched forth his hand, let the sun remain upon the mountains of Ajalo. Let the moon remain upon the valley of Gibeon. And he said the sun did not make haste to go down. That is power. The ability to rule the constellation. Have we seen power? Moses stretched his rod and the Red Sea parted. And the Bible said in Hebrews 11 verse 11, it said by faith they walked through the Red Sea on dry ground. Which the Egyptians are saying to do, perished. That's power. Have we seen power? Jesus showed up in the grave of Lazarus and he said, Lazarus, come forth. He said, he that was dead came back to life. That is power. Jesus carried five loaves and two fish, broke them, take, give them 5,000.
thousand men were fed. That is power. Our generation have not seen power. Is it time we fail me to speak of Gideon, to speak of Barak, of Jephthah, of Samson, of David, and the prophet who through faith subdued kingdoms, obtained promises, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire. Weak men were made valiant in battle and they put to flight the armies of the alien. That is power. We have not seen power. We need to cry for dimensions of power that are eternal. A generation hungry to see the hand of God must appear again. He said in Exodus 3 verse 20, I will stretch forth my hand and strike Egypt with all of my sons and my wonders. Then Pharaoh will let you go. And Moses showed up and told Pharaoh, let my people go that they may serve me. Exodus 12 verse 12, and God walked through Egypt and judged the cause of Egypt and they let Israel go. That is power. Ayo, 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 ayo